Hey guys, welcome to another video in this series here. This is the third video, and uh, in this video we're going to go through um, the basic mechanics of an airbrush, um, how to mix paints to use for your airbrush, and um, how to maintain and do color changes uh, by cleaning your airbrush. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about is the basic airbrush and how it works. Um, and we'll identify some parts so that uh, you'll know what they are named if you ever have any problems and, and you need to ask questions. Um, so basically this is where the hose connects. And then when you put down on the trigger, it releases air. And the air goes through the air tunnel here and then out into the nozzle. Okay. Um, and depending on how much you pull back, this is where it releases the amount of paint. Now, I was talking to the last on the phone, and I did realize I made a couple of errors here. Um, pulling this back doesn't actually um, control uh, the narrow, the wideness or the narrowness of the lines that come out of the airbrush. That's actually the size of the needle. It only seems that way because the less um, paint you push out, um, the less paint that comes out. So it'll look like you have a narrow line when you pull it all the way back and you release the max as much as you can get, a lot more paint comes out and it looks like a lot more lines, uh, you know, the wider the lines coming out. So, uh, now that uh, that's corrected, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the tip. This is the color cup, alright, this is what it's called, the color cup. If it's the siphon feed on the bottom, you hook the color cup like that, that's where the color cup would go. Okay, now the most important thing and probably where you're going to be doing a lot of cleaning and uh, troubleshooting a lot about your brush is the tip okay now you go ahead and uh, identify these parts for you um, we have the needle right here that's poking out which you can see okay and this here this piece right here is the um, needle cap and the new cap is usually there to protect the needle from getting bent as you can tell by these extrusions here uh, this airbrush did come with a needle cap that did not have the extrusions, but I have them on here because I have a habit of dropping my airbrush sometimes. Okay, the next piece over, which is uh, this piece right here in the middle, is uh, the nozzle cap, and that's where it controls the air and um, uh, paint pull. Okay, and then inside here we have um, uh, the needle tip, which I will show you in a moment. Okay, so what happens is when you push the air, the air comes out, okay, and then while the air is coming out and then you release the, the, the trigger, or when you pull the trigger back, it pulls the needle back, opening the area up so that paint can come out, okay? So basically, the more you pull back, the more the hole in the tip here gets bigger, okay? The paint travels onto the needle to the needle tip and gets pushed out into the air. Now let's go back here to the airbrush. Here is the housing or the body of the airbrush. When you screw this part, and most brushes are like this, you have uh, the needle right here. This is the needle that goes all the way up to the tip here. This is the needle chuck. All right, and if you loosen it, this is what tightens it and it holds the needle in place. When you loosen it, take it off, you're able to pull the needle out of your airbrush. Now be very careful here. When you do this, is uh, the needle is very sensitive very fragile and it can easily bend. And that's how you pull the needle out of your airbrush. Now this part comes out here which is contraption for the trigger. Now you don't need to unscrew this ever unless you're trying to fix something or you're doing a full cleaning of your airbrush and even then you might not want to uh, pull that part out. Airbrushes also have um, different types of cool features sometimes like this velocity here has an um, has a chuck down here where you can adjust it where it would stop the amount of pull you could go back. So if you want to be sure that you don't pull too much back, you can set it to a certain uh, setting and then you'll be limited to how much you can pull the trigger back. This is uh, this is helpful if you want to do really minute um, spraying. Now in some airbrush also there is something called a MAC valve. Okay, It's the micro air control valve and it's usually right here in the front of the brush. Now I think what, uh, that's what one of the commenters were talking about. 
um, when you say, do you see the regulators on the airbrush? Well, the question what he's talking about, but I believe he's talking about the uh, Mac valve that would appear here. Those are on more expensive brushes. It controls um, the air pressure going to your airbrush like a uh, regulator by, you know, turning the knob. Okay, now let's go to the tip here. When you're cleaning your airbrush, there's probably a couple things that you would do. You would take, you would open the back here, pull the, br uh, the needle out, okay, and then unscrew this part here, which would be nozzle cap, and I'll have to be careful here. This here, this little piece here for this airbrush, this is the um, needle tip. This is the housing around the needle that protects uh, the needle as you pull, pull it through. Now normally I would open this up to clean it. Okay, I would carefully take the needle tip out. Okay. And then I would go ahead and take the needle out. And then just begin to clean my airbrush. I might have to clean some paint that I might have gotten in here. Now, between these two here, uh, which is the needle cap and the nozzle cap, is where the fluid cap sits. And unfortunately, I cannot open it right now. But most likely, you will never open this. You will never open this up to clean it. There should be no paint getting into this area here. If there is, there might be a crack or something in your um, uh, nozzle cap. So you might have to get that fixed. And also, the needle tip, as you can tell, are, is really tiny. So you have to be very careful with this airbrush. There's really small parts in here. And choking hazard for babies. And that's basically how the airbrush works. Again, quick summary. Air comes through here. Pushes the air out to the air tube, which you will see. Yeah, you can't see it in here. But it's in here. The air will go out through um, the fluid cap. And then when you pull the trigger back so that there's enough uh, there's enough low pressure coming out of the tip, it'll start pulling um, the paint, either from the gravity, side feed, or side feed. Now, I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to spray some water through the airbrush here. And um, I'll show you. When you pull the trigger back slowly, you can see how much paint would come out. And if we start pulling it back, you see more paint comes out, and you'll see how the width of the lines would work on a dual action airbrush. Okay, thinning or using ratios is not always the correct way to go about it. Okay, some it depends on the type of paint you're using, as well as like in the Vallejo line, it depends on as well the batch you're using. Sometimes the paint pigments are thicker in one batch than the other. So when you get a new bottle, you're going to have to take a look at it and go, well, um, is this thin enough? And a lot of people would say and tell you what you want to do is thin it to a consistency of milk. All right. Now, originally when I got into this, I'm not a milk drinker. Okay. So I had no real idea. I never paid attention to what the consistency of milk is. All right. So here we go. This is H2O, water. Okay, this is the consistency of water. Okay, pretty thin. Okay, shake it around and, you know, it's thin, it's water. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at what milk looks like. So you tell when you shake it around, the milk climbs up on the wall of the test tube and it slowly slides back down. So that is the best way to go about thinning your paint is to get into a consistency of milk. Okay, now what I like to do is um, when I'm mixing the paint with my mixer, toothpick or my Tamiya mixer, I would slide the paint up against the wall to see the consistency of what it currently is. If it looks like this, then I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and talk about um, cleaning your brush and maintaining it. And I'll also show you, you know, what I do in between um, paint changes as well. Okay, first thing you should know is that, you know, different types of paint have different uh, types of way to clean it, the thinning material or the cleaning material. Now, um, enamel paint, you're going to use enamel thinner. Um, lacquer paint, you're going to use lacquer thinner. And for acrylics, you can use a variety of stuff. You can actually use the um, airbrush cleaner you get from Vallejo or Iwata. 
Uh, you could use water, um, but best to use some kind of a solvent like a Windex or even alcohol. Okay, so I have the airbrush loaded and with black paint. And let's go ahead and turn on the compressor here. And I'm sitting here painting. Okay, I did what I need to do. So what I would do is just dump out whatever excess I have. Okay, into a container or something. And then I'll have um, pa leftover paint in here. I'll go ahead and use uh, alcohol. Fill it up. Wish, wish it around a bit. Okay, and then stump it again into your container. Again, fill it with alcohol. <laughs> I get stuff all over the place. Get a good fit. Get a good wipe here. Get all the paint out. More alcohol. Spray it into my Owada station here. And just get pick up one of these. Twenty-five bucks. Great, awesome, and it also doubles as an airbrush holder. And then do is go ahead and spray out the rest make sure it comes out clear and then you're ready to put in the uh, next color and that's it that's how you do the color changes now in between usage I like to just really just give a nice clean out of my airbrush spray some stuff through it um, make sure it comes out clear you got everything and I do about a couple come out clear there's no paint in there when that's good you just go turn that off and I would open the uh, back here and pull out my needle and just go ahead and uh, dip it with some alcohol or whatever cleaner you else you use and just give it your needle a nice cleaning, you know, nice rubbing. And then you just put it back in and put it on your key back on your holder and wait for the next uh, time you're going to be using it. And now like every two weeks or so or when I pick up my airbrush and I pull it back, um, you know, before using it and notice that it's a little sticky, I do a complete clean out of my airbrush here. What you want to do is pick up pipe cleaners or go out and get a set of this. You can get this at any um, hobby store that sells a uh, airbrush. Uh, airbrushes or you go on eBay and get this okay and uh, these are nice um, make sure you get the uh, ni nylon bristles not the steel bristles okay otherwise you're going to scratch up your um, airbrush okay, so what I would do is I go ahead and take it apart this I would just take the back part out pull out the needle okay take out the nozzle cap here Pull out the air tip, the needle tip. So what I would do here is use turpenoid when I do a full uh, cleaning here. And turpenoid, now there's some plastic parts in some of the airbrushes here, so turpenoid may not be a good choice or you don't use it, you know, use it sparingly, okay? Like I said, I do it every two weeks a month or when it gets uh, really, really gunked up and this is sticking, the trigger is sticking, then um, yeah, I would use turpenoid. Dip in turpenoid, make sure to clean out the paint on the nozzle here. And then I would uh, run this through the airbrush like this with turpentine in it. Make sure it gets good rubbing. Okay, make sure the needle's not gunked up with um, paint. And just do a wipe down there. Okay, nice, clean, and shiny. And that's it. Then you would just go ahead and uh, put it all back together again. Now, one thing that Les uses is an ultrasonic cleaner. And I got to pick me up one of those. Just take your airbrush apart, throw it in the ultrasonic uh, cleaner, and let it run. That's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, now all this stuff you see here is my own little ritual. All airbrushes have their own. So if you ever have a suggestion, comments, or uh, questions, just post them here. Mail me or call me. And it goes for everyone else. Um, like and subscribe and all that other stuff. See you later. For more tutorial videos on how to paint your figures, check out Les's channel at Awesome Paint Job. For cool terrain tips and tutorials, check out Chris at Terrain Noob.